So I'm putting more hours on top. So the routine is important because eventually it's going to make you a beast in one particular area. That's why you need a routine because you can't trust yourself not to get off track. That routine is going to keep you on track and make you a one percenter. I'm going to need you to be real. Hey, that version of Eric Thomas would never make me a one percenter. I realized that. So when I sat down with Warren Buffett, three things that blew my mind. I never really realized where his money came from. So the first thing I did was I was like, yo, his money comes from investments. Well, what happened was when he was 12 years old, his father gave him his first like grand and let him make an investment. So I realized he's not getting up early in the morning just to get up in the morning. What he says he does is he reads. He doesn't just read books. That's not what he does. He reads financial reports. So this dude was telling me he read a financial report of General Motors in like 1964. And I'm thinking like, why would you be reading? It's 2000, whatever it was, 14, 15, I don't remember what year it was. It wasn't the 60s. But to his point, he was reading the document, the financial, listen to me. He's a financial genius. What was he reading? Finances. As, as you know, I'm known to be a highly productive person. I speak a hundred times a year. I write four books a year. I run three businesses. I travel all over the world. People say, how do you do it? Well, I have a morning routine, and I developed this a long time ago, and it really works. What I do is I always get up two hours before my next, my first fixed appointment. So let's say I have a phone call at 8 o'clock, and I get up at 6 a.m. I have to be in the office at 8.30, 6.30. It's always 6, 6.30, maybe earlier if necessary. But always two hours before my first appointment. And the first thing I do for the first 30 minutes is I exercise. And I'll do stretching exercises, I'll do yoga exercises. Sometimes I'll get up a little earlier and I'll do aerobic exercises, or life cycle, or elliptical machine, or treadmill, or swim. This is every single morning. the next hour to plan, prepare, have breakfast, and get to my first appointment. So give that a try. Get up two hours early, exercise for the first 30 minutes to get yourself going, read a little to prepare your mind, and then be ready to go one hour before you have to be somewhere. Meaning and purpose for you. You will really enjoy it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, in fact, the number one thing I hear from people who meet me in person is, I've had so many people meet me and they're like, you surprised me. I'm like, why? Like, you just, you're just working. You just sit on your phone or you just work on your laptop. And you know, like they thought I'd be this crazy guy running around being crazy. And they realize I'm extremely restrained. I, I, I'm very careful about everything I do. What's, what's your routine like? Okay. So it's a good question. So okay. I wake up whatever time that happens to be. I don't, I, what time, what time do you I have a problem sleeping. Okay. I'm not good at sleeping, but let's say I wake up around nine ish, but I go to bed usually around three, four. Uh, first thing I do is drink two liters of water. Then I train. Every day I train for about 30. I train for about 30 to 45 minutes a day. I don't train. What is it? It depends where I am because I travel so much. So if I'm in the, if I'm in hotels, you kind of got to do what you can do, right? So mainly it's weights now. Um, I, I don't box as often because it's, it's inconvenient. I was training for a fight. It's different. And I was sparring a couple days ago. I still got the move. No one hit me, so I still got it. But um, yeah, so usually about 45 minutes, I, 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 I tear through a bunch of weights. I just go as crazy as I can, get that out of the way. Yes. Bunch of coffee. I'm a coffee addict, I guess. I don't know if that's still allowed. I hope so. Really? But um, okay, good. Because uh, I love caffeine. I believe caffeine's a miracle drug. So I'll have two or three coffees, another two liters of water. I only eat dinner every day. I don't eat breakfast. I don't eat lunch. Yeah. And then from there, it's just completing tasks. I have something to do. I have a podcast with you today. Or I have somewhere to go, or I have to go. Maybe sometimes it'll be something good, like pick up a new car or a new watch. But if not, I tell, I promise you now, I spend every waking second on my laptop or staring at my phone running the empire. That's all I do is work. Life to me is work. Life to me is work at the point now. Sleeping's work. I only sleep because if I don't sleep, I wouldn't be able to work. If I could work without sleeping, I wouldn't sleep. Uh, people look at my life and they, especially you're right with the parking, they see the cars, they see the boats, they see girls, etc. They're like, oh wow living this crazy life and then they get around me and realize that yeah we're on a boat so i prioritize trying to win the battle in the morning so i always win the battle in the morning so i get morning time every morning i go for a run 
That's the first thing I do every morning. I haven't taken a day off from running since December 2016. I've every day up in the morning. So I also stretch out every day for about two or three hours. Every day. I've missed two days in about five and a half, six years. So that's just my routine. And about four days a week I'm in the gym hitting the weights. Because you know you can't just be a runner. So this is every single day. The, the monotony in my life. But this is what builds discipline. You know, and not everybody, I'm not telling everybody to do this. Mm-hmm. But this is my lifestyle. This is how I build self-discipline. Consist of. Oh, well, that's fairly straightforward. I get up around somewhere between 6 and 8, and then I work till 10. As, as hard as I can, flat out, every single day. So, and I've been doing that for, with very little variation, although it's been much more extreme in the last year for like since 1985, like I work probably, well, I work, I would say, 14 hours a day, at least 14 hours a day, so that's about 100 hours a week, and um, the time that I don't do that, I spend with friends, and but mostly with my family, and so, uh, yeah, and I work as efficiently as I possibly can, I'm always trying to do everything I can as fast as I possibly can, and I'm accustomed to that, because like I said, I've been doing it for I've been doing it for 30 years, so that's my daily schedule. And, and I don't know even what I would do if I didn't do that. Uh, I, I have this cottage that I go to, although I generally spend time writing up there. I go swimming with my wife, and we go canoeing, and, and I can take a break in that way. But most of the time, if I take a break even up at the cottage, generally what I do is like carpentry and fix the place up. And I don't like to be unoccupied. I have to be occupied doing something productive all the time because otherwise I'm not pleased with myself so and you know I decided a long time ago that I was going to try to live a hyper efficient and hyper productive life and so it's been a challenge I it's an enjoyable thing for me to some degree because I'm very interested in trying to figure out how much I can possibly do in the short period of time all the time so number one specify your damn goals because how are you going to hit something if you don't know what it is that isn't going to happen and often people won't specify their goals too because they don't like to specify conditions for failure so if you keep yourself all vague and foggy which is real easy because that's just a matter of not doing as well then you don't know when you fail and people might say well i really don't want to know when i fail because that's painful so I'll, i'll keep myself blind about when i fail that's fine except you fail all the time then you just won't know it until you failed so badly that you're done And that can easily happen by the time you're 40. So I would recommend that you don't let that happen. So that's willful blindness, right? You could have known, but you chose not to. Okay, so once you get your goal structure set up, you think, okay, if I could have this life, looks like that might be worth living, despite the fact that it's going to be, you know, anxiety-provoking and threatening, and there's going to be some suffering and loss involved and all of that. Obviously, the goal is to, to have a vision for your life such that all things considered that justifies your effort okay so then what do you do well then then you turn down to the micro routine it's like okay well this is what i'm aiming for how does that instantiate itself day to day week to week month to month and that's where something like a schedule can be unbelievably useful google calendar it's like make a damn schedule 